New Crowd Online first came out to the world in 2004 from the South Korean developer Joy Max. It's one of the first MMORPGs that pioneered the whole genre. With highly advanced graphics and a theme based on the legendary Silk Road, the game made it to the top not long after its launch and left behind unfading childhood memories to those who had the privilege of growing up alongside this game. 19 years have passed, and Joy Max somehow is remade Max now, but the company is still running Silk Road Online well and strong. That alone is enough to let you see how big of a phenomenon the game has truly been. It is, without a doubt, a legend of the MMORPG industry. We Silk Road gamers know this very well in our heart, our soul. A legend, just like the historical legendary Silk Road itself. The game shows no sign that it will stop anytime soon. It came to my mind that what if we hop on a camel and pilgrim all over again in 2023? Which is two decades later since we first got to know this masterpiece. For me, I can't wait to relive those days. The overwhelming loving screen, the spot on music composition, it would right away drag you back to the 7th century AD, to the times that many cultures had collided through trading. As you might have noticed, everything on the screen mostly is not in English. That is simply because this is the Vietnamese client. Want it or not, I cannot do this with any English Silk Road client because of the IP blocking. We may max for some reason has been blocking every Vietnamese IP that it could find. And I happen to be living in Vietnam happily. But no worries, BTC game company from Vietnam has had it all dealt with. So this Silk Road client is as authentic as they come, and it has just been released only since July 25 this year. Therefore, everything in the game is guaranteed to be up to date. First thing first, when I log in the game on a grand opening day, it is not a crowd that catches me off guard, because any game could be crowdy. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> You start off the game with a 4 week last peak starting upon using 3 scrolls of double experience, 50 scrolls of 100% movement speed, some fast teleport papers, don't remember how many, some reverse teleport papers which when set will allow you to teleport to any spot on the map up to 3 different spots. You only have to discover the sites first and then set things up, along with some resurrection papers and a thousand portions of both healing and mana with 500 each. Almost forgot and also a Nasrun Bracer. When you run out of those, you can always buy more of them in a real money store, which can be accessed by pressing F10. Alright, but let's step back a little bit to the create character section. We have two main classes. You can either pick Chinese culture or European culture. When the game came out the first time in 2004, it only had Chinese class or Asian class, whichever you want to call it. European class only came in after a quite long time, and I kinda spent all the time that I had playing Asian class only. So now if you want to know how the European class is like, I suggest you play the game and give your own judgments. I only play Asian here, but I can still give you some things that I know about European class like the heal very slow and depend on each other when it comes to farming unlike the other class. Character appearance choices are very familiar, and there are no changes even though it's been 19 years. Same case for weaponry. You can either use halberd, which is best for dealing physical damage, in full strength build, while javelin scales best with intelligence build which deals a lot of magical damage. You also have blade and shield, sword and shield, and finally bow. 
With all those choices, you can either build them up with strength build or intelligence build or both. You firstly find yourself in the middle of Cheng An, the very basic town of Silk Road Online, as well as the real ancient Silk Road. And just like all the rest MMORPGs, you try to scale your level by scaling mobs and doing quests. Quests mostly will ask you to bring down mobs as well, or they will ask you to bring back ingredients, dropping also from killing mobs. And sometimes, you also have to do some deliveries. And missions are really rewarding all the time. Mobs are diverse and very creative. From straw demons to cyclops, Big weasels, ninja turtles, stone lions, flying tombstones, walking trees, brigands, tigers of all colors, and many many more afterward. I think every monster has their own lore behind. It's just that I don't really know all. But for example, this one I know. If you take a look at this horse, you notice that it's dead, but somehow alive. It's been stitched together from many pieces. You can also see its bones through the holes on its body. And you see those yellow enchanted papers? You know that in Chinese culture, there are tales about a kind of vampire, which can be restrained and controlled by the master who puts these yellow papers on the naughty dead body's forehead. After the first few levels, mobs start to spawn more types than just normal one, like leader, giant, party, and sometimes party leader, party giant. Leader mobs are a little bit tankier than normal type. Party mobs are even tankier than leader. Like the name itself, party mobs are designed to reward the whole party, more efficient than a single player, in the effort to take them down. Same for party leader, and finally, mobs from level 30 will have chances to spawn the nightmare of every Silk Road single player without their friends around to help them. The party giant. You wanna bring them down yourself, Fine, but if a party giant mob is at your same level or even 4 or 5 levels lower, it takes no less than half an hour and tons of resources. And the reward is really not worth it, unlike killing such giant. Let's talk about a pet feature, starting with the phobic glass peak that I mentioned earlier. It will start counting the time left when you activate the item. This peak will help you picking up literally anything on the ground that is too far from your reach or when you are too busy to pick things up in the middle of a mob after mob killing. This pig will be so helpful doing the work for you. Sometimes if your pig runs over the hill and you can't see it for a very long time, don't worry it will return eventually with a surprise in its separate inventory. And when it runs out of its lifespan, you can always see it again for all you want in a real money store. Or if you want something new, you can buy other item picking pets besides the pig. Different looking, but they all have the same price. Just remember, you can only summon one item picking pet at the same time. However, picking up things is all this pig can do. If you want a pet that can assist you in combat, the real money store won't let you down. These pets can either fight alongside or buff you in combat. It can be a dinosaur, a King Kong, or a Switch. Some of them are able to fly like this phoenix, and more. I am not exaggerating at all, but you cannot resist the cuteness of these animals. First time encounter, I was really into this dino pet. When it runs, it has the pace of a farm duck. Or with the ostrich, unlike the dinosaur, it creates a sound when it moves, and it sounds like hitting a big leather drum with rhythm. I chose the dino pet, it fits my false friend build. It can fight alongside you independently and deal up a lot of damage. I bought it a little too late when my level was high, so it kept dying for the few first times to stronger mobs. But after all that, my dino grew in level, making him really tanky and mostly impossible to get killed, at least by the mobs. But at this point, you would encounter a bigger problem. It's appetite. When it's hungry, it refuses to hit, no gain experience. Keep in mind that even when it's not hungry, it cannot surpass its master's level. You can always heal it, keep it fed, and revive it when it dies, as long as you are willing to pay the man at all the horse barns and towns. Okay, ready for the best things? 
if you buy the equipment set for your combat pets, you can actually ride them and grant them the ability to help you gather skill points and the ability to turn into the berserker state with you. And you should know the fact that these pets are literally the fastest things in the game. <laughs> Why talk about pets first overall things else? I gotta say I'm used to this game and the only thing new to me is the pet feature. However, we are about to get on it right now. Every time you gain one level, you are allowed to invest one level point in weaponry pattern and one level point in either magic skill pattern or support pattern. You would have to pick that one level point to invest in support or magic pattern for each level gained. And I choose magic. So we don't talk about support pattern here in this video. So, for example, when I'm at level 5, the maximum level I can upgrade my weaponry pattern is 5, and also 5 for magic pattern, which makes it 10 level points in total. Keep in mind that in the weaponry pattern, I would have to choose between the 3 types of weapon to invest, while in the magic pattern, the level points are shared between the 3 elements, thunder, fire, and ice. And every time you gain 1 level, your character will automatically gain 1 point in strength and 1 point in intelligence and 3 free points. Since I am a full strength physical dude, I always invest all those 3 points in strength, which would enhance my health, my physical damage and physical resistance. Sometimes, if you have gathered enough what it takes, you are able to turn into a berserker, which grants you double damage of all types and double movement speed. And as stated before, since I bought the dino set, my dino gets mad along. Throughout the clip, you have seen me switch between my normal set and my black fifth set. Let's talk about it. Back to the login screen, since creation, you get to choose between the two jobs of the game. Either you are a hunter or a thief. And this is what makes the game what it is. This game used to have three jobs back in the day, including merchant. But now there's only two. From what I've heard, the differences would probably start to show up since level 71. But before that, both two jobs are likely the same. Since level 20, when you are able to put on the job set, in my case, the thief set, you are allowed to do the job quests and go on trading trips between towns to earn ingredients, so that later on you can craft your job equipment, which would enhance your power. With this job set, you now possess a job level mechanic separate from your character level. When you put this on and go farm, you will gain both normal XP and job XP. With job XP, you gain job level and you even have a job skill pattern here right beside all the patterns, which is upgradable to call out animals helping you on your missions and trips. The only bad side of wearing the fifth set is that you will always have to watch out for getting killed by people from other jobs. In case they are stronger, whether you are on a mission or trading trip or just casually farming, if someone from the other job spots you out, they might try to test their power on you and if it appears that they are much stronger than you, they will kill you without hesitation because it will benefit them from collecting your cargoes. And it works the other way around if you get the upper hand. Take a look at this dude. I was on a mission. Pay attention that this is not a trading trip. It's just a delivery quest from Don Huang to Zhang An, but it looks like a trading trip anyway. This hunter guy tried to take on me, but I was much stronger, so the result is he died 11 times.
I pressed him so hard that he had to bail his own butt out with a quick button. Special cargoes for trading trips can be picked up during killing mobs and they are in your job skill pad. You can load all those cargoes on your animal and go on a trip from town to town to trade off for ingredients and recipes that you can later on craft job equipment. Or you can entrust all the cargoes to the NPC in town so that he could go on a trip on your behalf because you would likely get robbed along the way by other players. Take a look at this dude. You see how miserable I made his life, but due to my lacking of damage, he made it out alive to Ho Tan, the new city across the sea. I chased him for 13 minutes. If I were the dude, I'm afraid I would not be that lucky. The rewards for successful trips like this are really worth the risk. But if you want to spend your time farming like me and don't want to take the risk, and trusting your cargoes to NPC with lesser rewards is not really a bad idea. Along the progression, you might wind up with stones used to reset the attributes on your equipment, or alchemy portions to add higher plus to your equipment. Might learn more crafting recipes from a certain NPC in Jiang An Town. That's all I gotta say about crafting feature called the alchemy. Short but concise. About the weather in the game, it's well executed. Can't believe they made all this before 2004. I believe they have made some development over this, but still very impressive and realistic with a very old game engine. Sometimes I forgot it's not raining outside my room. Here are some little notes that I noticed that might cheer you up, or you might see them really helpful. When you collect XP from killing mobs, the effect is likely inspired by Onimusha. When you gain level, you will be rewarded with a very ancient Chinese symphony. These bugs sound like in the making of it. Someone actually had to spit into the microphone. With a small budget, you can always farm level lower mobs to save up a lot of healing and mana portions, which would probably save up your goal investing them in the first place. But keep in mind that you should never farm 7 level lower mobs down, because that would split the experience in half. When you go to some certain docks, you can actually see the other river bank on the other side with its structure over there. This is the map the whole Silk Road Online world and I have marked the part that we have discovered so far. I have not even reached whole 10, was just at the gate of it and returned. Therefore, I hope the game would offer me more materials for the second review part. Not that I want this to have a second part or something, but that depends. Alright, hope you enjoyed the video, it's my pleasure to bring the beauty of this game closer to you and don't forget to watch the rest of the video and support me by clicking the subscribe button below. Beautiful game, beautiful spectacles, and by such views the video will end. Goodbye and see you next time.